back man. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of In the Field with Sarge. Today we're going to be checking out a Ozark Trail four-person instant A-frame tent. No assembly required. Uh, it's a pop-up. It's a four-person. It will hold a queen-size air mattress. Now, I've had this tent for about four years, maybe five. I've used it once because of my disabilities. I actually did get a cot inside this thing. And of course, again, Adventures with Spackman, you beat me to it. So here we go. Let's give it a try. A um, few specs on it. It's 84 inches wide, 96 inches long, uh, 52 inches high. It's about four feet high. Um, they list it as a four-man A-frame tent. Four people on the ground uh, would be kind of snug, but um, I know my wife got in there with an air mattress, uh, our 200-pound dog, and our 40-pound beagle, and slept in there comfortably. So let's go ahead and we'll get this thing open, and we'll see how it goes. All right. Now, like I said, I've had this for a while. I've loaned it out a few times. I haven't seen this tent in about two or three years. And like I said, I've only used it once. So we're going to go ahead and check it out. Let's see how clean it was returned to me. Instructions in the bag. Now these run from anywhere from fifty to seventy-five, eighty dollars, uh, sometimes even more. But uh, let me make sure we're in frame, and we'll get this thing unrolled, and we'll go for it. Let me see if maybe I can get some better level ground. And of course, we're going to check it out, see if it's still waterproof. Let's go from there. See if I remember how to do this. Uh, now, as you can see. They call it easy pop-up because of these extended poles that are on there. So, let's go there. This way. As you can see, it's a very large tent. I'm going to turn it, and then we'll get it staked down. As you can tell, it's a pretty big tent. Now we'll go ahead and we'll get her all staked out. It's got huge windows in it, as you can tell. 
there's the spinner from dad it does have a cable access port which is rather nice the door the door has a screen on it as well that also seals up so we're gonna go ahead and get it staked out and we'll go from there All right, there it is, all staked in. As you can tell, the rain fly does pull out on elastic straps. And you have these huge, huge vented, let me see if I can get this camera right. Huge ventilation. Now, of course, you can stake them in closer to the tent if you'd like. The back door does open to a window. And we've got an equipment pouch. Of course, the floor is a little dirty, but not too, too bad. As you can see, there's plenty of room in here. You can get a high cot in here as well, so that's pretty nice if you have to be a little bit more towards the center if you're one person, this is great. Now, of course, you have guy lines here to really stretch it out, what it secure it in the windy or rainy weather. All right, so as we know, there's no assembly required. The poles are pre-attached to the tent for quick and easy setup. It's got large ground vents to increase internal air circulation and organizational pockets to keep your gear organized and off the floor. It's got an electrical cord port which provides easy access to power sources. And it does quit fit a queen size mattress. Now one of the problems I had when I first got mine was these straps that go onto the legs were upside down. They were literally twisted all the way around and there was no way to unhook the tent and flip it over or anything. So I had to remove all of these, flip them over and put them back on again. Now my biggest concern was this breaking but as you can see, it's all stitched in rather nicely and you can still use this as a stake point. Um, haven't had any problems with it yet. Here's some more guy outs to really stretch it tight. And I think we'll do that before we give it the water test.
But on the whole, it's an excellent tent. My, I was concerned about the way the pipe bends across the top, but it seems to be holding up true. When I had it, I did have a little bit of a windstorm, and she held up really nice. Now, for today's demonstration, I'm using these metal stakes, which I hate. Um, but for now, I have all the good aluminum stakes in with the Pomali tent, but I will get some more. you can stick it out to a single point or to two separate points at a 45. I think what I'm going to do is just go to a, a central one state. All right, so as I was saying, my good buddy Spackman with Adventures with Spackman beat me to this one. That's two in a row, Spackman. You must be bribing my kids with cookies or something. But it's all good. Now you get two unbiased opinions. I didn't really watch his video completely. I was too busy yelling. All right. No, no, I'm only kidding. Spackman's a great guy. He does some great videos. Good family man. Very, very impressed with him. So I think we'll go to a... Well, around the door we'll probably do a separate one. Get some more. Come here. All right, so there it is, all staked in and guyed out. Now, what I did on the back side was I just ran the two to one for right now. Of course, I would be wanting to go more over here just to give it more of a spread. But for now, here's the spinner. Now, we can see that the outer cover is double stitched. It looks like there is some um, tape in there we're double stitched down at the end of the rain fly nice stitching for the money it's actually a pretty darn good tent now of course in the winter time you could stake the sides in closer to cut down on the draft but it's very very well ventilated so it does have that big, huge storage pocket back there. One with a flap, too, which is really good to put your phone in. It has that electrical access panel uh, for campground camping if you're out there and uh, need some power. Um, there's a gear pocket in the door in this piece over here. There's a pocket in here that you can put gear in, but also if you roll up the door, It'll stuff in there too. And of course, the screening looks like it's triple stitched in. Nope, double stitched. But the ends have been stitched too to prevent fraying. It looks pretty good. So let's get set up and we'll give it a water torture test. And for the water torture test, We're going to make sure it gets really wet. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up. Now with this test, we're going to hit it from all four sides. We're going to let it run for about an hour, and we'll see if we get any leaks going. All right, let me get 
get some more water pressure going. But hey, it's like 85 degrees out right now, so it's pretty nice. We have a slow wind going. But we'll let that run for about an hour. And we'll be back soon. So one of the ideas that I had for this tent was to take this right here this whole seam and put a zipper in it and of course a, a rain flap and all of that and then doing the same thing on the other side and then putting a grommet on each corner and you could make somewhat of a little bit of an awning um, like a baker tent um, give you this high a tent pole so now you have access to the inside of the tent through the side um, but I need to get the right tools and equipment and someone that's got some knowledge more than I have about sewing. Uh, a wonderful wife might be able to help me with that. But that was one of the ideas I had years ago. But, you know, of course, with all the other issues that were going on, um, this basically stayed in my car as an emergency shelter in case I get caught in the backwoods. All right, so here's a close-up of what I was talking about. I don't know if you can see where the double stitching meets this seam here. I was talking about possibly putting a zipper here all the way down to the bottom of the tent and then in the corner of this panel putting a grommet, maybe one in the middle and then, of course, one at the end and repeating the process. So then you can lift this whole panel up and have an awning um, that'll fit a standard tent pole because we're only going to be about three feet off the ground where you can even use a stick But now with this flap up you have access to the tent through the side You can put chairs out there. Of course the flap will only come out probably shorter than that where that pole is You know, but at least it gives you somewhat of an awning and then of course in inclement weather You just take the zipper and zip it on down and that was my idea eventually it's on my bucket list of things to do is to sew up and modify a tent and that'll be in future episodes all right and here we are on the back side with that big huge window all right we'll let that go for a little bit Now, I do have some final thoughts on this kind of a tent. Um, first of all, the floor plan is sewn in at ground level. Um, it does have the waterproofing tape in it, and I'm getting really wet. So, it's just something to keep an eye on, something you might want to keep seam sealing and checking, but I really don't like the floor pan of a tent being sewn in at ground level. It's really nice to have a little bit of a bathtub. So, just something to think about. Uh, again, it's on the ground. Um, it'll fit a queen size air mattress uh, if you have difficulties laying on the ground. It's four feet tall, so if you're okay on your knees or crouching, uh, it, it's a great tent. But again, with people with mobility issues, yes, you can get a cot in there. You can also get two low-profile cuts. You can get an extra large cot in there, okay? Not all at once, but, you know, that does get you up off the ground. But again, it's a little bit higher than the backpacking tent, which was only three feet. This is four feet tall. So there are options and things to do here if you do have problems with mobility. And there's still more to come. Um, it's just a matter of overcoming the issue that you have. If you can't get down on your knees uh, for prolonged periods of time, 
you know, a kneeling pad is a great alternative or a great tool to have, and I, I will be showing that. Um, you know, so once we start to figure out where your limit is, then it's a matter of figuring out what to do to overcome it. And again, we're getting higher and higher. Uh, the next one is going to be a little bit lower, but a lot easier to use. So with that, we'll let this run, and then we'll check it for reach. All right, so there we are on the back side. Let's move it over so you can see. And we'll let that go for a bit and see what happens. All right, and there's the front side of the tent. Now, in all fairness, some of those jets of water are shooting in an upward angle and might get all underneath the... Uh, zipper flap um, so we might get a little bit of leakage from the front door but we'll see all right so the water's off and there's sarge and as you can see sarge weighs almost 200 pounds now he's my retired uh, service dog um, but that would be a great home for him when we go out camping. So maybe I'll bring that for him when we go camping. All right, so let's move inside and see if we found any leaks. All right. So here we go. I'm going to open the bottom first. Now I better open the top. All right, so that's good enough for now. We do have a little bit of water in here, and I do believe it was from where I had the zippers placed, but that's negligible. All of this is totally dry. Well, we got a little bit of water in the corner over there. But again, I was totally unfair with it with the upward spray. And now the big trick will be to find out where that leak is and patch it up. So there you have it, folks. The Ozark Trail four-person or A-frame foldable tent. Now, of course, it's not something you want to use for backpacking because it's about, I would say, 13 or 14 pounds. Um, and it's kind of bulky. So it would be kind of hard, but if you were car camping or even using a sled or a snowmobile in the wintertime, sure. Now, of course, this is not a wintertime tent, but you can certainly fortify it and make it somewhat comfortable in there. So there you have it, folks. Have a good day, and remember, love one another. If you like my content, give me a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Uh, if you'd like to donate to the channel, there are uh, links for donations for equipment or... Sarge, what are you doing? For equipment or trips. And again, thank you all and thank you for all that you do.